Hi, I am a senior at Northwestern University. When I was a freshman, I went through sorority recruitment and I was very clueless about the process as I was going through it. A lot of information about sorority recruitment is shared through word of mouth between friends and maybe the reason I was so clueless was because I had no friends. However, having gone through the process, I now have a better understanding of how it works. So hopefully this will be helpful to students who are thinking about joining a sorority and currently do not have any friends. I think this is a really important topic because a huge portion of Northwestern's campus is Greek. This video is going to be Q&A style with timestamps in the description. Quick side note. I dropped out of recruitment the day before students received bids, so I did not go through the entire process. That being said, I went through the majority of it and I am friends with several students who completed the process. I am also currently not affiliated with any Greek organizations. Let's get started. What are the different Greek organizations at Northwestern? There are three categories of Greek organizations that female students may join cultural, academic, and social. Cultural Greek organizations include organizations that have an emphasis on certain cultures, like African American, Latin, or Asian cultures. The academic Greek organizations tend to be co-ed. These include the law fraternity, business fraternity, and music fraternity. The last category is social sororities, which will be the focus of this video. Social sororities are affiliated with PHA, the Panhellenic Association, which has a very rigid recruitment process that is very different from the recruitment process of the other Greek organizations. The 12 social sororities at Northwestern are Alpha Chi Omega, Alpha Phi Chi, Alpha, what the f Alpha Chi Omega, Alpha Phi, f Alpha Chi Omega, Alpha Phi, Delta Zeta Gamma, f Kappa Alpha Theta, Kappa Kappa Gamma, Kappa, the 12 social sororities at Northwestern are On campus, most of these organizations have abbreviated names, but I'm just listing the full name for your convenience and Googling purposes. What is the recruitment timeline? There are information sessions at the beginning of the school year, and the Greek organizations will have booths at the club fair, which is also at the beginning of the school year, where you can meet members of different sororities. Registration is at the end of fall quarter in December. You pay a fee. It was $50 when I registered as a freshman. You also must fill out a short application, including a photo of yourself. Formal recruitment starts the first week of winter quarter in January, and bids are given at the end of the week. After this point, the timeline differs slightly for each sorority. After receiving a bid, you will have a very short amount of time to accept it and pay an initiation fee. Then there is about a month of an initiation period during which you meet your big. During initiation, you must study for and take the test on the sorority's values and history. After you pass and are initiated, you are a full member. What happens during rush week? I'm going to share the schedule I was given when I rushed in January 2017. It may be different for this upcoming year, but I expect it to be pretty similar. The schedule is also fairly similar to the recruitment process at other universities. Rush week for me started with the PNM forums on days one and two. The forums were two hours each day. PNM stands for potential new member, by the way. At the forums, prospective members learned more about the recruitment process in general, and that is where we met our recruitment counselor. Attendance at only one of the forums was required. The recruitment counselors are supposed to be objective guides for prospects during recruitment. The recruitment counselors are each in sororities, but prospects are not supposed to know which one, and the recruitment counselors are not involved in the decision-making process of which sorority prospects are accepted. Set 1 took place on days 3 and 4. The events during these days took up 5 consecutive hours on each of the two days. During this time, I visited all 12 chapters, 6 houses on each day. Set 1 consisted of 30-minute parties. These parties were designed to help prospects become familiar with the PHA community. So I'm editing right now and I just realized I didn't really describe what the parties are and they're not your typical parties. There's no alcohol. They are only allowed to serve you water. They are not allowed to give you any other type of gift. It's really like a series of very intense five minute conversations with different members of each sorority. 
usually they try to have you speak to girls who have common interests as you. In the application that you fill out before recruitment, you list your majors and interests. I think the reason for this is that sorority members want you to feel like you're connecting with their sorority. So they organize it so that you have conversations with sorority members who have similar interests to you. And in the five minutes, you basically have time to tell them your major, where you're from, and that's kind of it. It it goes by really fast, and it's very, very intense. You're talking very fast to try to get a lot of information out, and so that you can learn a lot about them, and they can learn a lot about you in a really short amount of time, because time is very limited. And it takes a lot of energy also. It's very draining going through these parties. I don't know why I use the word party. That, I mean, that's what PHA calls them, but they're not what you think of when you think of parties. It's almost like speed round dating. We spent a lot of time outdoors in between parties and so it was very cold. It was close to zero degrees on the days that we were visiting houses. So a lot of us were wearing very warm jackets. PHA recommended that we wear something casual and we were also required to wear the PHA t-shirt which was given to us on days one and two. I also forgot to mention that when you're in the houses, you're not allowed to be on your phone, but between houses, it was really common to see prospects on their phones taking notes about the houses that they just visited, writing down the names of all the sorority members that they just met, and the qualities about the sorority that they liked, just to help them keep track when you're visiting that many houses in such a short amount of time. It's really easy to get them mixed up. At the end of day four, we ranked our houses in order of preference, which the counselors then collected. Set two took place on day five for four consecutive hours. During set two, we visited up to nine chapters, depending on which houses invited us back. It was more common for girls to only visit six to eight chapters on day five. These parties were 35 minutes each. Sorority members shared more information about sorority life, as well as each respective chapter's national philanthropy and ways the chapter raises funds or awareness for the cause. Attire was similar to set one, except we were not required to wear the PHA t-shirt. They recommended a blouse and jeans or a casual skirt and tights. They also recommended comfortable shoes. Set three took place on day five for four consecutive hours. During set three, we visited up to six chapters depending on which houses invited us back. It was more common for girls to only visit four to five chapters. Day five consisted of a series of 50 minute parties which were less structured than the previous parties. They recommended the same attire as the previous day. Preference night took place on day seven for six consecutive hours. This was the last day of events where prospects visited up to three sororities. These events were more formal and serious. I removed myself from the recruitment process on day seven before attending the formal events. I was told that both prospects and sorority women would be dressed up. They suggested wearing dress pants or other formal attire and bringing a bag with sweatpants and boots to wear between houses. Bid night was on day eight. This was the night that prospects received their bids from their recruitment counselor. Afterwards, girls who received bids met their new sorority sisters and traveled back to their new chapter. Bid night is very celebratory, and often fraternities or acapella groups will serenade the new members. This night was casual, and new members received new t-shirts from their chapter on this day. Do people cry during recruitment? I have seen it happen, and they were not tears of happiness. <laughs> what percent of people get accepted to sororities? It is a very high percentage, much higher than most schools. It varies from year to year, and my guess is definitely above 80%, probably in the 90s, but it is not 100%. How do I get into a sorority? You can go through the formal recruitment process, which I just described, or you can also recruit through COB, which stands for Continuous Open Bidding. This process is less structured and more casual. Sororities use this method to recruit if there were not enough students who accepted bids during formal recruitment. Advice for Rush Week. Bring chapstick, lip gloss, or Blistex. You will be talking a lot and your mouth and lips will get very dry. 
My favorite lip moisturizer is Blistex because it lasts a long time and I can put it over any other lip enhancer for a glossier look without smearing the original lip enhancer or altering the color. I also like it because it's clear, so if you don't have a mirror and you get some outside your lip, it's not a big deal. See the link in the description for the Blistex I prefer. What is Big Little Week? If you get accepted to a sorority, you are assigned a big who is a current and already initiated member of a sorority who will shower you with ridiculous gifts for a week. You will not find out who she is until the end of the week. She is supposed to help integrate you into the sorority and answer any questions you have. What are the different tiers? There are no formal tiers defined by PHA, but there are some generally accepted tiers on campus. Some sororities are top tier and some sororities are not. The rankings fluctuate slightly from year to year and are up to debate. What are the GPA requirements? These are the GPA requirements as of 2017. What are the fees for joining? As of 2017, these are the average chapter fees. Should I rush? This is up to you. I can give you the pros and cons of rushing. This is a list that I made before I decided to drop out of recruitment. Pros. One, if you are accepted, Big Little Week is awesome. Two, if you are accepted, there are a number of exclusive social events you will have access to. Some of the events include mixers with different fraternities and formal dances hosted at various venues in Chicago. Three, if you are accepted, this will help build your professional network. In general, alumni of sororities love helping out sisters after graduation. Four, if you are accepted, you may have the opportunity to hold a leadership position in your organization, which is a great experience that you can put on your resume. Five, if you are accepted, you may have the opportunity to participate in volunteering events through your organization, which is another great experience that you can put on your resume. Now for the cons. One, you have to pay $50 to rush. This is before you even know if you have been accepted and even before you've attended any of the recruitment events. Two, you have to pay to initiate. Three, you have to pay a quarterly fee to stay in the sorority. Four, if you are rejected, it does not feel good. And the thing is, if you go through this process, you will be rejected by at least 11 sororities. That's just the way it works. So even if you do get accepted to one sorority, it is a lot of rejection to handle. Five, there are a lot of time commitments, including weekly chapter meetings, fundraising requirements, and volunteering requirements. Each sorority has slightly different requirements. There are other more subjective pros and cons that I considered before I dropped, but my goal is for this video to be as objective and informational as possible. If you're looking for more of a juicy insider scoop, I encourage you to talk to other people about their experiences in Greek organizations. I'd also recommend making your own list of pros and cons. That's all I have for today. Please like this video if it was helpful and subscribe for more college related videos, including interviews with my friends about why they chose their majors. Also, let me know in the comments what videos you would like to see next. My channel is obviously super small, so I can very easily accommodate any video requests. That's it for today. Bye.